What's up everybody, Supreme Decisions here, and today I actually decided not to do the first studio produced video, but I did decide that I want to go into something as far as Latin in law. And in dealing with that, it was something that I ran across that dealt with moi. And I thought it was kind of hilarious because again, this is someone that is part of our legal system that is bound to protect us, but it goes again to show most of them have no clue of the things that they're looking at. So when they're saying it, thinking that it's something wrong, they fail to understand words have power. And when you're also dealing with these people that'll say, Latin is dead, it's a dead language. I've constantly said, you better not go to court. Well, today is one of those Latin phrases that you might want to hear. And it's, nole prosecute. Or, you know what, I probably mispronounced it. Country, get over it. Love you guys anyway. Um, For the most part, what it deals with is a Latin phrase just meaning unwilling to prosecute. And it's something similar to something that you probably hear more often, which is no lo contendere, which is basically they don't want to contest it. But in no le prosecute, the prosecution is generally abandoning. Abandoning. Abandoning going forward. Because you go and you often hear me talk about a case that I dealt with um, probably about a year ago where we discussed prosecutorial misconduct because prosecutors have the option of cherry picking cases. Well, whenever they are exercising their prosecutorial discretion, they also walk into this realm where they no longer are covered by this thing called harmless error. But this is one of those things that kind of go hand in hand with harmless error. Because what it actually does is, as you can see, I'm reading it, probably see the top of it. Anyway, it is a formal notice of abandonment by a plaintiff or prosecutor of all or part of a suit or action. And the entry is a court record. Now, when you're going through this, it's, it's again, it's one of those things. It's when the prosecutor actually sees or actually feels like, you know what? I filed these charges, but I'm unwilling to go through the headache because that's generally what happens when you deal with a bully. You punch a bully in the mouth enough, they'll decide to stop doing what they're doing at least with you. And basically not to be unwilling to pursue. And it's generally something that you'll find in what a lot of people like to like to use is in common law. These are things just because you're dealing in a court of records, you're dealing in some sort of administrative court does not mean you're not dealing or using or applying common law aspects or tactics. And this is just one of those things. What you're also going to run into is the fact that the person, again, like I said, that makes these decisions is generally going to be the prosecutor or the person that's bringing these allegations up against you. They're unwilling to move forward. And the reason is the prosecutor themselves had an opportunity to reevaluate evidence. Again, these are things that are necessary for harmless error to apply. The evidence. And remember, we talk about the reason why they don't want to go to trial is because the lack of evidence. The reason why they use the tactics of scare and fear and convenience is because of evidence. They don't want you questioning probable cause because probable cause only comes from a crime which establishes evidence. Or they'll have the emergence of new evidence. This is something that's generally done in appeal where it's going on where you see someone that's coming up for appeal and it's done under legal error. This is something that I covered earlier in the, in the 100. 
Here's one where it's generally found in a domestic case or some type of family violence or some type of violent case. It's the failure to, of witnesses to cooperate. Now, again, you guys know the story with me and my ex, which the police pretty much forced her to file a complaint against me. Well, when it was time to prosecute, she refused to cooperate with the prosecution because the police officer had stated that she had been struck when in fact she told the police officer in the recording that they refused to turn over that no i had not hit her i had thrown my laptop down so when that came up the prosecutor chose not to prosecute moved on to another day and the last but not least but also the one that is the absolute least reason for this to even occur is the desire to give the defendant a second chance. Now, this is probably the rarest of opportunities because again, the word, the very word discretion means they have an option they're doing it on their own volition, their own free will. So everyone should have the option for a second opportunity at life. That is not the one that is exercised the most. Now, what's the effect of a nole prosecutor? Basically, it's a form of a dismissal. It is not a dismissal because the normal effect of a nole prosecutor no, they promise, is to leave matters as if charges had never been filed. This is the equivalent to an expungement. I'm going to say that one more time. The normal effect of a no lay prosecutor is to leave matters as if charges had never been filed. It's not an acquittal. It's not a dismissal. It doesn't attach double jeopardy. It just means that those charges are to be looked at as if they have never existed. So, that's what we have today for Latin and Law. That's what we have today for this video. Just know I appreciate everybody that has been donating, those that are currently donating, and those that will donate in the future to allow us to continue to keep going, to keep growing. Thank you guys that have signed up for the masterclass. You know what, because I'm going to do the videos for the masterclass a lot differently. I'm going to set up a storyline for you guys. So those that are part of the masterclass, just know I got a couple surprises for you. Those that aren't, sign up, pick a tier, one's great for you. T-shirts are going on sale. And what we're also going to do is start adding a monthly T-shirt or two. The hoodies actually, you know what, we're going to blame COVID. COVID is the reason for everything else. So we're going to blame COVID that the t-shirts didn't, the hoodies didn't come in. And, but we are going to have them and they're going to keep rolling. They're going to be added. So when they come in, they come in, we're going to get everything together. Also, thank you guys for supporting the podcast. New episode will be up um, this Monday, 5 a.m. Eastern time your time wherever the hell it is so again it's going to be the first studio produced podcast for this channel for the most part the supreme decisions legal minute podcast and the discussions are going to be a little longer we're going to have interviews we're working on getting the podcast itself televised live we're also going to have some live podcasting so you're probably going to start seeing more and more episodes going up. And but keep supporting that as well. 99 cents, 4.99, 9.99 and don't forget donate via Apple Pay. Love you guys. We're going to keep going and as you see, we're going to keep growing. Supreme